So if you watch the Sunday morning political talk shows, you expect to see dueling talking heads spouting talking points. They've gotten used to that. But now, a familiar face and a multi-award winning journalist is hoping to change all that. Matter of fact, with Soledad O'Brien will be a relaunch of Hearst's one season old Sunday television political magazine show. Soledad's approach, go beyond the typical political analysts and surrogates and try to get to policy issues and to expand the conversation with emerging leaders and new voices. The Sunday Morning Show will be produced and hosted by Soledad out of the Museum in Washington, D.C., and it premieres on Saturday, September 10th, in many markets. Soledad O'Brien joins me now to talk about all of this, as always. Can you a imagine a to have show you. without surrogates? Without oh, my gosh. Why <laughs> yes. would we ever want to do that? Why would we ever want a show where we actually talk to the real people wow, who have the real it's ideas? it's a shocking idea, isn't it? Oh, indeed. So, so I guess that gets me to my first question to you is, is that how do you expect this to be different from, from the other Sunday morning lineups, which are, you know, you and I have done them before, and, and they're marvelous, but there's kind of a sameness. Yeah, I think so. And I think the, the being able to do it as a magazine format actually it's, helps explain, a lot. Explain what that means to It means we, we pre-tape the show, so we're really looking with a lot more nuance, nuance and context. So I would never do something that is, so last night, candidate A said this, and candidate B answered back this, and we're going to go back and forth over and over again, which is very much much, I think, how a lot of shows do it, right? right? There's, she answered this, then he said this, and then she said this. Now let's bring the surrogates out, and they can finish yeah. the what fight What do they for mean us. by that? <laughs> right. What do those words mean? So I think, you know, really, if you were, it allows you to give a lot more context, which I have to say, I think certainly right now in this political debate, we're, we're missing a lot of. I was looking at um, reporting on race in this election. And you realize, well, everybody's going back and forth, literally calling each other bigots all the time now. Uh, there's no context around, well, what exactly has happened? What specifically are we talking about? It's just two people yelling at each other. And so our goal is to make sure that we're expanding some of these stories and also expanding the voices, just different perspectives. Often, if you're talking about poverty, you have some learned person or a policymaker talking about their policy plan around poverty. Very rarely do you actually hear from a person who's living in poverty, mm. who would be a really interesting. So that's part analyst. of your idea. Let's Absolutely. get let's get some people to set Actual the stage. Actual real for people. This. Yeah. Uh, you know, people who are involved in the the story that you're focused on. So if you're talking about entrepreneurship, let's talk to entrepreneurs who can say, I think this is a good idea. Here's been my experience. Uh, and also, I think a lot of voices that are just different. I remember once going uh, up to my alma mater, which is a big competitor with your <laughs> alma mater, mine, yeah. and saying at, at Harvard, is there, a, is, there a, uh, is there a black woman who can talk about a rock? Like, because every day I have the same generals who are having this com Is there another voice? And it, it doesn't, it's not better, it's just different. It's a different perspective. Is there a way to open up the conversation, really actively search for other people's voices, younger voices, different perspectives that maybe haven't been heard? So we're gonna do that very, very intentionally. Are you worried at all that by delving into real voices and real people, you might lose some element of, of uh, let's call it smoothness or professionalism in terms of, of talking on TV? You know, I think two things have happened in our time at, since weekend today. One, everybody is constantly posting, writing. Uh, social media has really changed how people communicate. There's, it's very rare to have a person who never, ever, ever has said anything in public before about an issue. I just don't think that's gonna happen. You could bring a, a camera crew to my house and my daughters would happily sit down and give you a very polished interview at age 14 and 15 because they're on Snapchat all the time. They do this constantly. Also, I think, I think it's the, the onus is on the, the interviewer to do, you know, I don't need people to be smooth. I need to push them to be authentic and really challenge them when I feel like they're holding back. Why do you think we've seen such a trend towards the notion of surrogates? Why, why, why the, the candidates themselves or the political figures themselves or the business figures themselves, rather than them showing up and answering your questions, the surrogate shows up? I think, I think it's a little bit of what I've seen lately, which is weird, which is, and this has happened to me, someone will call you up and say, I need you to say this and this and this. So we're doing a story on this. And I need you to say, I'm looking for this side because I've already got the guy who's going to say this side, right? And everything is posed as this 
polar opposites. And so if you say, well, I actually don't believe that, I think it's a little bit more like this. They'll be like, okay, well, I'm gonna get someone else because he's doing this side, so I need this side. Back in the day, it used to be a little more of, I'm gonna bring in an expert and then I'm gonna pick their brain and maybe challenge them, maybe disagree with them, maybe agree, but- I can pose the opposite side of this to generate I, and I'm our not right. I'm not going to assume that um, I'm going to use their expertise and leverage it. So we all learn something. And I, I have found now, and this has been said to me by many experts, that you know people will call them up and if, if they need to know what you're going to say very specifically. And it has to be in opposition to the other person because everything is set up as a this versus this versus how do we solve this bigger problem. So I don't think you have to do everything in opposition. I think it's much more nuanced than that. And really, I think when you hear from different voices, maybe who don't look at an issue, this versus this, we can come to some more solutions. Are you optimistic at all about the, the course of political discourse? Do you see it getting any better, or do you see it sort of just continuing to decline, as many people believe? Yeah, I think for the next 10 weeks, we're probably going to head right into the morass. Um, but I don't know. I'm a, I've always been a believer in the progress is a good thing. Uh, you know, I think sometimes you have people who feel like, oh my God, change is bad. And I've never been a change is bad person. I think change is interesting and it's gonna force us to re-examine how things are done. So I think change and some of what we've been seeing in this election cycle, hopefully will have people analyzing the way they interviewed candidates, even the way they, they look at stories. I mean, I, I've been so amazed at just the lack of information and how everything else gets blown out of the water because we're not covering any other story than a good example is, you know, a trip about immigration. We're not even actually covering immigration. Yeah, no not one's covering, we're, not we're, ask, we're, not, we're not asking candidates about education. Is there anything more important to the public than education? At all. So, and and it, it never even comes up. So, and in, in a way, you're not even covering immigration. You're covering two people shouting at each other about immigration, which is a little bit different. So, yeah, I, I, I am a hopeful person. I'm not sure we could do our jobs if we weren't optimistic people. And so I do think there'll be some good that comes out of what's been a very messy and ugly political season. Well, my hope is that your show will going to contribute to that. Indeed. Soledad, always a pleasure. Likewise. Good luck with it. Thank you. And a reminder for you folks out there, matter of fact, with Soledad O'Brien premieres September 10th or September 11th in various markets, so make sure you check your local listings. And again, a reminder, American Graduate Day will be live on public television stations across the country on September 17th, starting at 2 p.m. Eastern Time. Again, check your local listings.